Good morning, or sorry, good afternoon, uh, and happy three-day weekend. We had an exciting week, some uh, real volatility and micro strategy. I'll talk about that, but let me start with uh, Coney. Uh, I won't say we got completely lucky, but but we did. Uh, let's talk about what we closed at for the week, and that sort of will get us started. So Coney was up 3.28%. We went from 28.7 to $29.64. So we rose 3.28%. And ironically, if you look at coin, our underlying asset, it went from 256.70 to 265.12. So we had exactly the same. That's rare in itself, right? We tend to save a little bit, not go down quite as much as the underlying, and typically we won't go up quite as much. Sometimes we exceed it, but in this case we matched it. All right, so what happened to our positions in there? Because usually when you get to a Friday this week, it was Thursday because of the three-day weekend, they have to roll positions. And then if they have people buying, this is the, what did Coney do with the share count? Let me look at our holdings. It stayed the same, but Coney had been selling off and Misty had been improving. So for the first time, uh, Coney held its own. Uh, let's talk about what they did in positions. So on the 28th, they put on their weeklies. We were able to get out of, look at this 14,360. Okay, so we, as we went into 328, we had this big bundle of 14,360 weeklies, and we had sold those for $7.75, so we collected $11 million, right? So during the week, you know, when Coney started to take off. I think they panicked a little and what's that? Not quite 3%. Um, they took back and look, we sold for 775 and we bought back for 1948. So that was not setting us up for a good week, but we turned that around, right? So on that particular one, it, you, just to show you with a small sample, it cost us 486,000, right? Because we had sold them for 321,000. And when we bought them back, it cost us 808. So it was a net loss. But look what happens when we bought them for 57 cents. Now, and why did we have to pay 57? Look at where we closed. These were written at 267.50, right? We didn't get a lot of money. We got $7.75, but look at that volume. So anything like that so we made 10.3 million on buying those back on our weeklies right the maximum we could have made was 11 and then we actually lost over here so if you take the 10.3 and take away the four we netted about 9.9 .9 million which is sweet that's exactly if you can do that all the time and the funds are geared to pay out on what you make on the weeklies. If you happen to roll a synthetic, remember the synthetics are usually a month out. So sometimes you're gonna have a roll early on or right near the distribution, but those don't generally count as much in the payout. I mean, it's still cash flow in, but even if the synthetic is losing and they haven't rolled it, so they haven't taken the loss, but it's underwater, They'll pay you, look at, at, at Tesla as an example, they'll pay you on the weeklies, right? In our case, we want to get paid on both because we're doing well in both. So anyway, that's what happened there. Let's go look at our synthetic. That was the only other position where I think they added. All right, so we closed that out. Oh, well, let me, so what we did was we went and sold one week out, which is the protocol for the weeklies. So we sold at $5.17, but we went out to the 285s, right? So we closed at 265, we sold the 285s. Those are only 7.5% out of the money, and this is a full week coming up, April 1 through April 5, right? So, you know, it depends on what coin really does, right? And so that represents $7.6 million that we could make 
if we end up having to buy those back for $10, then we would have lost $7 million, right? So you see the dynamic of these weeklies. So uh, I'll take a look at those under active and show you. So here's what we have going forward. We still have our 425 292s that we sold earlier last week that expired next week. So we're ahead of the game on those already or about break even because it was slightly lower when we sold that. But they're pretty far out of the money, 10.33. So we're looking pretty good there. On the 285s that we just sold, we're just 7.5% out of the money. But that's where the bulk of our contracts are, right? So there's the $7 million. I imagine this is closer to, you know, 900,000, maybe a million at the most. So our bulk is right here. So we're still, our internal volatility is still at the 87 range. I mean, MISTI is typically 140, 145, okay. We closed at 265. This was our NAV, so we closed at 29.64. Here's our chart. Again, we don't match the performance of the underlying, but how many of you have the cash to buy 200 shares or the margin to do all your own call writing? So if you want income, this is a nice way to get income and write it, you know. And for Coney, if you didn't buy it 30 previously, you're ahead of the game. Most people are ahead of the game. If you, dump, if you jumped in at that last peak at 30 and wrote it down to 19, and you're just now getting back to break even, although hopefully you've been getting distributions and you're ahead of the game. So you got to average into these and you got to stay in the yield max funds that you feel are bullish because these are bullish bets. The whole yield max fund is set up for a bullish scenario with the synthetics and with the weekly calls. They are coming out with these new funds that like in the QQQs and I think it's Apple, it's Coney, speaking of the devil, it's Tesla, it's ARK, it's NVIDIA, and the QQQ. So there's six new funds that they're waiting to launch on approval that they've already applied for. And these all have a bearish scenario. So they set up a protection for a down market. And I think the chances increase as we roll into April and May that we get a 10, 15, it could be a 20%, even if it's a 5%. That has a dramatic impact, right? That reduces your payout. You'll still get a payout on these positive funds, but your NAV is likely to get reduced. I'm bullish on crypto right now and think we're in a bull on that, so that's why I'm choosing Coney and Misty at this moment, right? Back in August or October or December were great times to be in NVIDIA and all that. And NVIDIA hasn't turned down yet, but do I think it will? Yes. It'll pull back. That's what most markets do. So I'll jump into the bearish symbol that Yieldmax manages for NVIDIA at that time and then switch out. And that has to do with where you think we are in a trend. Okay, let's jump back to this. So um, let's go do our synthetics. So they actually didn't put on any new positions in the synthetics. And for once, they didn't have people selling out. They would have had to sold some synthetics, right? So they stayed level on the shares at 13, or 1,325,000. So we are setting on the 14,785 that have already been deployed, we're setting on 23 million. That was up, I think, from 17 or 19. Some of you may remember the previous number. Um, that's nice, right? They expire on 419. We want them, we want the puts, this $15, as long as we're not below $250, we'll capture all that remaining money, right? That's $21 million right there that we, we could capture. Um, and so that's why we have $23 million. And the upside on the synthetic can grow if coin moves up to 280 to 90 300 which by 419 I suspect it will. Okay, 
So we talked about actives. I'm not going to go through all the cash and stuff. While it's important, it's not that important, right? The key was we closed out our weeklies and we made money. I do track these, but I don't think it's that. I'll go over holdings at the very end. Um, actually, let's do holdings and I'll do payments. So to summarize that $23 million, I go to the spreadsheet. And by the way, if you want to know exactly how the NAV is calculated, right? Here's the NAV. The NAV is calculated at roughly 2970. They add up how much cash do they have in treasury bills? How much do they have in the first American government fund? How much do they have in just cash cash that they haven't moved into something? What are their current book values on their positions, right? So we got a 2925 call, right? It's down to four dollars. I think we sold that for five and five and a quarter, five and three eighths, right? So we're ahead of the game a little bit on that guy, but it shows a, um, that we we should capture all of that, given it's only a one week, because that thing when you look at out of the money, it's thirteen point nine five percent, right? It's two ninety two and oh sorry, we got four seventy and it's around $4. So we're ahead of the game. Uh, we just don't want to run past 292 because when we start running past 292, we could have to pay anything above 297 and, and we lose money on the position. We have to buy it back. So we want coin to go up. We just don't want it to go up too fast, too, right? Too high, too fast. All right, so going back to the holdings, and this is our this is our synthetic. I put them. I color coded the synthetic, right? Um, and this was where we get 23 million, right? We gained 44. We have a liability of 21, so we're setting in a paper profit of 23 million, going in absolutely the right direction till 419. This is the position we just put on, so we put it on you know, at some price and, and we show it as a liability against the books because we have to wait for expiration. And so we don't want it above 285, right? And we don't want this one above 292.50, but they've been doing pretty good on the weeklies. All right, let's look at payments. So in the payments, we've got 39 cents, right? So they're not gonna just pay us 39 cents and, and that's 5 million on 13, or yeah, total share is 13,325,000. So it's been down for the month, but it's stabilized here. But we've got $7 captured when we already rolled a synthetic. So my gut says to me, they're gonna pay us with a 80% volatility, 87, and I've listened to Jay, and he, he thinks that we should be paying at that rate, so that gets annualized, right? So I'm suspecting 250, maybe 280, $293. I don't see over three. I honestly think it's somewhere between 270 and 290 would be my guess. Let's see how we do this week, right? Four three is declaration. These won't have expired, so I'm, I'm looking at for between 270 and 290. It'll be a new high, should be a new high. I'd be ecstatic at $3. Okay, so let's move to uh, Coney, or Coney, let's move to uh, Misty, where a lot of craziness happened in Misty. Okay, let's go to our March tab. We closed out a number of positions and added a number of positions. So let me start with the weeklies. All right, let's get over here and look at those. So the big to do was this one right here, these two, but primarily the one at 167. So these were our weeklies and this was the bulk, right? 167 and 21. Those were 1,800 strike prices. We went into Friday, the previous day close at 1919. These were underwater. 
right? We sold them for 46 and 47, and so 119 means that we're underwater 60 dollars. And if it moved up from there, or even if we bought it back during the day, we would have had another 10 or 15 dollar premium in time left. So we would have had probably a hundred dollar a share uh, loss. We would have been buying these back for 146 or 147. Now, luckily, in this one on these weeklies, the amount of shares aren't that big. So we probably would have been looking at, we, we had eight, 800,000 we had collected, but we probably would be looking at a two and a half million dollar loss, right, to take away. We turned that around. Now, honestly, the what was our closing price? Our closing price was 17.04. I, I forgot to give you that. I'll go over that in just a minute. How the underlying did and how how Misty did. So we closed at 17.04. They were fearful. Maybe they weren't going to make money. But these should have been closed at pennies, right? They really should have been closed at pennies on the dollar. You know, eight cents. If you go all the way to close, you're gonna you're, you're gonna have an eight cent, three cent, right? So they. They got scared probably and paid 10, but I'll take a profit any time, right? So here's our profit now. On 97 that we sold them, we collected 76. And on 786,000, we collected 619. So that's good. I, I, you know, always make money on a weekly is good when we were gonna lose two and a half million going into that day. Now, what happened? A lot of you have that. First off, a big analyst came out and said, MicroStrategy is at a 14% premium on Bitcoin, and its value is because Michael Saylor, the CEO, is a Bitcoin proponent, and he has 11 billion on the books with their cash. All true, but it's also a business intelligence company. They have their own cash flow, they have other things. So, I don't think that the overvaluation is justified, but it's how Wall Street works. My opinion really doesn't matter. It's manipulative, right? They run it down. Maybe they tell their clients, jump in and buy more. Am I bullish on MicroStrategy? Absolutely. Is it sky high? Will it enter a bear market? Yeah. Probably four months, eight months, 12 months, it'll turn around and maybe go down 50%. Will it come roaring back and go, yeah, it's kind of following the, the crypto cycle, although it's had its own business and its earnings. But um, that's my two cents on that. So let's cover this. So on 328, um, 42.99. So we were down 4.25% in the fund. Look at the underlying, it was down 11.18. So that hurt us on the synthetic. It just sort of took some of our profits away, but we got plenty of time till 419 to capture those. So I'm not, if, if, if I could have engineered a downturn, if, if I did it just the way I want to do it, I would have ran it down to 1650 and ran it back to 1800. And it didn't get back to 1800 and, and I think on the opening on Monday, you're going to see some real volatility at MicroStrategy opening. That thing could drop down to 1550 and but I think within a day or so, it's going to stabilize and it's probably going to be at 1900 by the end of the week. Let's see, but that's, that's what I think. I, I think the analysts had a little bit of you know, concern, but it's also crypto, and it's also MicroStrategy, and it's also Michael Saylor, and it, you know, that it, it's the world we're in. Okay, let's go through specifics. So, they did a bunch of positions, right? I've got these all recorded on 328, so we got three items, but I wanted to point out what we did with these $10 ones, because that was our weeklies. What they had done, they had one other weekly, it's two contracts, right? And on this one, they had written a 2130 because it was up at 1900, right? So it was easy to buy that back for a nickel, right? Because that was so far out of the money. There was absolutely no risk. They were gonna hold that till near the end of the day. Maybe it was 15 cents and then, you know, and it would have expired worthless. But the way these funds are engineered, they don't get put stocks at the end, they're cash settlements. Okay, so 
they made $6,840 out of a possible $6,850. Not a lot of money, but hey, it's always nice to win, right? So let's go through the other three that they put on, and then we'll talk about synthetics. Okay. So they put 188 positions on. And by the way, when you look in the holdings, there were some clerical errors on their reporting. So by looking at the holdings, you know, they're showing more calls and a few things, like they're showing six cent value on these right here that we know they bought back at 10. They're showing, you know, a number of them, like 400 and something setting at six cents. Well, the six cents may have been the last trade, but they would have expired worthless. But they want you to cash settle. So did they really get any for six cents? I don't think so. So whoever did that, it was probably the good guys left before the day was over after trading and they gave the junior intern the job of posting out on the website. That would be my gut. And it just was screwed up. The, the way they reported was inaccurate. And I just, I gave you the bulk. So if they really did get some of these taken off at, at six cents, we make even more money, right? But I, I'm going by what I believe happened. Okay, so we talked about these. This is the three new ones. So they said they put on 188 and they got $67.5 and they're 1985. Well, look at that. That's 16.45% out of the money because look at where we are. We're at 1704. All right. So really like that, right? I'd love to collect 188 times 67. Uh, five, which is 1.269. So that looks like easy money. Let's see. And and if some reason we don't, and it goes slightly over, and we buy it back, and we had a small loss, then our synthetics would just be roaring. Okay. So we sold five other contracts, and it and the only reason these are broken like this are all 1985s, but we got different prices. So we did 188 at 67.5 dollars. We did at $66.5, and we did two at $85.1. But they're all the same strike price. So those should reflect in active. So we've got, and we just roll these together, right, because I'm not putting in the pricing. So we've got 22 at 23.50. That's 37.87% out of the money. We've got 17 at 21.30. And we have 195, which I'm not sure is accurate. Let me see if the math added up. This may be part of their clerical error. 188, 193, 195. Okay, so they do have 195 in the active, and they do have 17 in that. Okay, so 1704, look at the volatility. We're still 145, but guys, that's what creates the premiums. That's how we make our money, right? Uh, and this should be forty-two ninety-nine because we were down. Okay, I changed it in a couple other locations. So look at this. Look what we can make this week, right? We can make some money. All right, let's go to holdings because this is where I didn't show what they showed about the six cents with 167 contracts on the on the uh, 267.5 calls nothing stays a value of six cents 328 they're done so somebody made that mistake so in total oh i didn't show you on the synthetics before i do that so they went and and by the way this fund also stayed at a million fifty this is the first time that they had been doing about 75,000 shares. So we may see some new people buy in. This whole uh, microstrategy going down, some people may be afraid now, afraid Misty is going to crash. There's little chance of Misty or microstrategy going down much more other than an inner day initial drop. Okay, so we sold five, not a lot. And look, though, because we're still selling 1700s, but they probably did this right around 1700. But with the amount of time, we had to pay more for the calls than we did selling the puts. But we're not talking about a lot of money at five. So it costs us 28,000 more than what we sold them for, right? 
Where this changed overall was the numbers down here. Look at this, at 1704, we're barely above our synthetic. If we had to close it tomorrow, we'd have to pay, okay, slightly, but call it break even right now. Whereas we, I think we had a $6 million uh, contract, I mean, I mean, paper gain. But do I expect Mr. to start climbing? Absolutely. We'll be back and we'll generate uh, good money. All right, let's go over to holdings um, and then we'll do payments. So holdings, this is our scenario for our synthetics, value versus liability on the books. Very close, right? Small gain, I said a loss, it's a small gain, but it's negligible, right? 150 million shares, not a whole lot. Here's the, the 195 at 1985. Those are only 7.5% out of the money. These 22 contracts are way out of the money. We got 15.6, so we should be able to, to book that and, and, and bank that. Uh, not much else sticks out there. there. There's our 2130s. Okay, let's go to payments. That's the best we're getting. This is probably going to be the, well, it, is, it will be the last week before they declare. They declare on 4.3, which is Wednesday, so they won't have a chance to get out of the weeklies. So they'll probably look at the paper gain on the weeklies if we stay below the, the, the 285 and the 292. So we're setting at million fifty. The shares didn't change. We've got $10 in total income per share, right? And we have $2.33 on the, sh on the short call on the weeklies. So... You're guaranteed. I know a lot of you guys want five and six dollars, and, and maybe we'll really get lucky and have that. My gut says this is a given, right? Absolutely, you're going to pay 233. If I had to guess, it's somewhere between three dollars and four dollars. I don't think they're going to go five. I could see four dollars, I could see three dollars, I could see the range between. Let's hope I'm wrong and let's hope it's greater than that. It'll be the first $3 distribution Neomax has ever done, but you got an exceptional fund. I think they're going to follow 1% of the 150. So based on 1.5 times a $40, I mean, we could have a $6 distribution. Would I just love that? Absolutely and hope it. But if I told you I believed 100% that was going to happen, I'd be lying. I'm just conservatively going to say between three and four, and if it's five or six, awesome. Okay, guys, the other final thing I wanted to, to say, and I said a little bit of this earlier on Coney. Guys ask me, now that I'm starting to do, my, you know, my channel's getting a little bit of following. I'm still very young. I'm going to do a lot more videos on other things as well. Um, this is oriented to yields, right? If you want just the gain of BTC, buy something else. If you want just the gain of MicroStrategy, go buy the stock. Well, it's difficult for many people, right? It's a $1,700 and $1,900 stock. How many shares can you buy? What can you do? Maybe sell some calls. You can buy calls, but it's risky, right? You start selling naked calls, you better have a lot of margin, right, to do what the fund is doing to if it drops or something unexpected, imagine somebody that sold a call midweek, an individual, when it was trading at 1900 and they went out and said, well, I'm gonna sell the 18, 1800 call and, and you know get 20 bucks. And all of a sudden they had to buy that thing back for $100, right? Because seven, you know, 1800 to 1704, so you just lost five times your money. You sold that call thinking you're going to get an easy premium in one day, and you got killed. So you don't want, unless you know what you're doing and you have plenty of capital, to do strategies. But there are some things, and I'll talk about it. And, and please, guys, I know I've got followers in multiple places now, but make sure you send comments or if you want something else, in my channel, right? I get a lot of comments in other places where I dialogue, 
but it helps if you do the channel and then I can answer you there and then maybe other people had that. Some of these forums and where you chat, they restrict. I reply to somebody and they block it or other people jump on with some negative taint or something they're doing. Okay, let you guys go. Have a great weekend. Talk to you all later. Again, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This is for fun and education. All right, guys, bye.